Hello, it's seven o'clock on Saturday, the 6th of January. Good morning. This is Today with Nick Robinson and Michelle Hussein. The headlines this morning, the Metropolitan Police says it's investigating possible fraud linked to the IT scandal, which led to the conviction of hundreds of sub-postmasters and sub-postmistresses. The BBC has seen Downing Street documents which suggest that Rishi Sunak expressed serious doubts about the cost and effectiveness of the scheme to send migrants to Rwanda. The US Supreme Court says it'll hear a case next month which will decide whether Donald Trump can run for the presidency. Also in today's programme, I talk live to the Chancellor Jeremy Hunt on the day a national insurance tax cut kicks in for 27 million workers. Michelle will be talking to the chair of the Labour Party too. More on one of our main stories, the post office scandal, from a man who lived it and the actor who portrayed him. We are fighting a war against an enemy owned by the British government, which means they have mighty forces and bottomless pockets funded by the taxpayer, while we're just skint little people. We'll talk to former sub-postmaster Alan Bates and the actor who played him, Toby Jones. And if you're planning to spend a cold January Saturday inside a cosy little bookshop, you're not alone. We sing the praises of the independent bookstore with poet Michael Rosen. Good morning from Mike Williams with the Saturday Sports. One of the biggest derbies in English football takes centre stage in the FA Cup third round this lunchtime as Sunderland play Newcastle. That's all after the BBC News read this morning by Alan Smith. The Metropolitan Police has confirmed it's investigating potential fraud offences in relation to the wrongful prosecution of hundreds of sub-postmasters by the post office. Around 700 people were blamed for accounting mistakes caused by faulty IT software, which made it look like money was missing. Some were wrongfully imprisoned in a scandal which has captured public attention after it was dramatised by ITV this week. Our correspondent Graham Satchel reports. The Met had already been looking into potential offences of perjury and perverting the course of justice in the post office scandal and two people have been interviewed under caution. It now says it's investigating potential fraud offences. Hundreds of sub-postmasters were forced to pay the post office large sums of money after investigations wrongly concluded they'd been fiddling the books. Scotland Yard says monies recovered from sub-postmasters as a result of prosecutions or civil actions may amount to an offence of fraud. The post office scandal has been the subject of a four-part ITV drama this week and as a result lawyers representing sub-postmasters say 50 new potential victims have come forward to claim legal redress. The impact of the false allegations on sub-postmasters has been devastating. Hundreds lost their jobs, their homes and their savings. Downing Street documents seen by the BBC suggest that when he was the Chancellor, Rishi Sunak had significant doubts about the government's plan to send illegal migrants to Rwanda. They indicate that his view at the time was that the policy would not deter channel crossings. Laura Koonsberg reports. The papers were written in March 2022, shortly before the deal to send migrants to the African country was signed. They suggest that Rishi Sunak and the Treasury were concerned about the cost wanted to scale back Number 10's original hopes, saying the Chancellor wants to pursue smaller volumes initially. The papers described the Chancellor's view as that the deterrent will not work. They also suggest Mr Sunak was reluctant to fund reception centres to accommodate migrants instead of using hotels or private housing around the country because hotels are cheaper. A source close to Rishi Sunak told the BBC... The Prime Minister was always fully behind the principle of the scheme as a deterrent. As Chancellor, it was his job to make sure it delivered and taxpayers' money was appropriately spent. The US Supreme Court has agreed to hear an appeal by Donald Trump next month which will decide whether he should be allowed to run again for the presidency. It'll consider a judgment in Colorado that Mr Trump's actions during the storming of the US Capitol three years ago amounted to insurrection and that he shouldn't be allowed to stand for the Republican presidential nomination. From Washington, Will Vernon reports. ITV's drama about the post office scandal has reignited interest in one of the worst miscarriages of justice of recent decades, the hounding and wrongful prosecution of men and women who were cast as thieves and fraudsters as some supposedly went missing from the post offices they ran. It was a computer error, and they said so, but the power of the state was unleashed against them. Now more victims are approaching solicitors and the police are looking at potential fraud offences. 
In Mr Bates versus the Post Office, Alan Bates, the postmaster behind the Campaign for Justice, is played by Toby Jones, the actor who joins us now, as does Alan Bates himself. Morning to you both, fictional and real, Mr Bates. Morning. morning. Alan, uh, first of all to you, how has it been to see yourself portrayed in this way, in a, in a drama? How much difference do you think it has had to the campaign? Oh, I think it's made a huge difference to the campaign. Um, uh, it, as you say, it's reignited the, the whole issue again. And, and hopefully we can try and bring some conclusion to some of the issues that are still outstanding now. But these people who are coming forward now, the, the victims who are coming forward, why would they not have done so before? I think in some instances, I think there may may well be people who just did not know what had been going on over the years are campaigning. But I think also, I I think some people will take support from the fact of so many of the victims standing up and being identified. Uh, And I, I think that's probably helped people, give them the confidence to come forward. And Toby, how familiar were you with the scandal before you came to play, Alan? Uh, I'd seen it uh, publicised on the news, but a part of my brain switched off. Uh, I don't know quite why that is, but when one sees what Gwyneth Hughes dramatised, when I saw the script, I sort of began to suspect that it was something to do with everyday people not kicking up a fuss, uh, modest, good people, as surprised as the audience are now by what they were up against. Did you speak to Alan himself? Did you two talk about the issues and indeed portraying him? Uh, I did. I did speak to Alan as soon as I could. Um, he was singularly unhelpful. Uh, he, uh, he, he, he obviously Alan's priority is what you outlined already, and I think he was, you know, understandably cautious about the drama and the necessary compression that is involved in a drama Um, and when I tried to talk to him about his personality a light in him seemed to switch off Michelle. Alan do you recognise that? Oh yes absolutely you know uh, (laughs) I can be helpful or unhelpful depending on how I'm feeling. (laughs) But was it because you were suspicious about the drama or because you felt it's not me that's important it's the issues? Oh, it's it's never been about me. I've always said that. It's about all of us. It's about the whole group in there. But I could see it as being an excellent vehicle to to get the message out there and to try. I mean, you can't you can't compress twenty years of campaigning into a few hours of, of, of filming. But I mean, what they did do very successfully, Tony and uh, sorry, Toby and all the other um, uh, the rest of the cast is they managed to get over the real suffering. And, and the persecution that they'd suffered over the years from post office. Yeah, because, Toby, that's almost unbelievable, isn't it? You were, you were saying how there was part of it, which despite hearing it on the news, hadn't really reached you. It's because it's almost unbelievable that the state turned on hundreds of ordinary men and women in this way. The extraordinary thing is it's very clear. On, one, on the one hand, it's very, very easy to understand. A computer system made an error. Uh, and loads of people suffered as a, as a result. And when they rang the helpline, the helpline didn't help them. Indeed, it did the opposite. It began to prosecute them for fraud. And that's very, very straightforward to understand. And it's so straightforward, you think it can't possibly be true. Uh, now, obviously, there are the complications happened later when you start when Alan st- t- took up this gargantuan task of trying to unite these disparate people who felt they were all isolated, and in a way the drama starts there when uh, when individuals become a chorus, as it were, and they become unstoppable and this is what makes it great and indeed sort of ancient drama yeah but it's not over alan and i want to ask you directly what you would say to the chancellor because he's going to be with us at 10 past eight and um, the inquiry is underway the compensation scheme is open but what does the government need to do now it i, I think the big hold up now for for what they call the compensation or the financial redress as it actually is it's it's the money people are actually out what they need to do is is speed the bureaucracy up which is holding up the payments to all of these people they really must light a fire under their officials to get this sorted because some people have already died before getting justice about 60 or 70 have died along the way so far 
Alan Bates and Toby Jones, thank you both very much.